Have you ever wondered why some animals eat their own kind? Yes, it's a gruesome thought, but cannibalism is a common occurrence in the animal kingdom. From the swarming depths of ant colonies to the vast blue wilderness of the ocean, numerous creatures engage in this seemingly bizarre behavior. But why does this happen? Well, the reasons are as diverse as the species that practice it. Some animals resort to cannibalism out of sheer necessity, driven by hunger or a lack of alternative food sources. Others, intriguingly, use it as a strategic move to reduce competition or ensure the survival of their own genes. Regardless of the reasons, one thing is certain. Cannibalism is more prevalent in the wild than one might initially suspect. It's a testament to the harsh realities of nature, where survival often comes at a high cost. So, buckle up as we delve into the reasons and instances of cannibalism in the animal kingdom. Cannibalism isn't just a random act of violence in the animal kingdom, it's a survival strategy, and there are several reasons why animals resort to it. Firstly, food scarcity can push animals to cannibalism. In times of famine, animals are left with no choice but to turn on their own kind for sustenance. This is particularly prevalent in creatures like praying mantises and spiders, who don't discriminate when it comes to their next meal. If another member of their species is the most accessible food source, they'll take the opportunity without hesitation. Secondly, competition plays a significant role in cannibalistic behaviors. In the wild, survival is the name of the game, and sometimes, eliminating potential competition is the best strategy. This is often observed among the offspring of certain species, where siblings compete for limited resources. For instance, in a litter of sand tiger sharks, the strongest pup often devours its weaker siblings even before birth. Another reason for cannibalism is the need for nutritional intake. Some animals engage in cannibalism to acquire certain nutrients that are hard to come by in their regular diet. For instance, male redback spiders willingly offer themselves as a meal to their mates after copulation. This self-sacrifice provides the female with a burst of nutrients, increasing the chances of successful offspring production. Lastly, cannibalism can also be a part of an animal's life cycle. Take the case of the Pacific salmon, for example. After laying eggs, the female salmon dies, and her decaying body provides nourishment for the hatched young. This might seem morbid, but it's just a part of the circle of life in the animal kingdom. As we traverse through the intricate web of life, we find that behaviors often considered taboo or unsettling in human society are, in fact, essential survival strategies for many creatures. It's a stark reminder that nature is as ruthless as it is beautiful. As we can see, cannibalism can be a complex behavior driven by various factors. Cannibalism is more common than you might think, and it's not limited to a specific group of animals. Indeed, it can be seen in creatures as small as insects to as large as mammals. Let's start with the smallest of them all, insects. One notorious example is the praying mantis. In a shocking display of cannibalism, the female mantis often devours the male after or sometimes during mating. This gruesome act provides the female with much-needed nutrients for egg production, ensuring the survival of the next generation. In the realm of spiders, the redback spider is one to watch out for. The male of this species willingly offers himself as a meal to the female during the mating process. By doing so, he increases the chances of his offspring surviving as the female is less likely to mate again after such a filling meal. Moving up the size ladder, let's delve into the avian world. Among birds, cannibalism is surprisingly common. Take the sand tiger shark, for instance. In an unusual case of intrauterine cannibalism, the largest embryo in the womb devours its siblings, ensuring it has the best chance of survival once it is born. Speaking of sharks, the great white shark is also known to engage in cannibalism. Adult great whites have been known to prey on their smaller counterparts, a behavior that is thought to help regulate the species' population size and maintain a balance in the ocean's ecosystem. In the mammalian world, cannibalism is less common but not unheard of. For instance, in times of food scarcity, polar bears have been observed to prey upon their own kind, particularly the young and weak. This is a stark reminder of the harsh realities of survival in the wild. Among primates, chimpanzees are known to engage in cannibalistic behavior. Though it's not entirely understood why, some theories suggest it could be a way of reducing competition for resources or a means of controlling population size. In the rodent family, the hamster stands out. Female hamsters, under stress or if they perceive their environment as unsuitable for raising offspring, may eat their own young, 
While it seems cruel, this behavior is actually a survival strategy, ensuring the mother can live to breed another day when conditions are more favorable. As you can see, cannibalism is not an isolated or unusual behavior in the animal kingdom. It's a survival strategy that has evolved in many different species, each with its unique reasons and mechanisms, from tiny insects to large mammals. Cannibalism is a fascinating and sometimes necessary part of life in the animal kingdom. Cannibalism doesn't just affect the individual animals involved, but it also has significant impacts on ecosystems. It's a grim reality of nature, yet it is one that plays a crucial role in the intricate web of life that is our planet's ecosystems. Let's delve into the world of nature's self-consuming creatures and the ripple effects their eating habits have on their surroundings. One of the most significant impacts of cannibalism in the animal kingdom is its role in population control. Yes, you heard it right. Cannibalism is nature's way of keeping a check on its own numbers. Consider the red-back spider, a notorious example of sexual cannibalism in which the female devours the male post-mating. This gruesome act of cannibalism controls the population of the male red-back spiders, ensuring the survival of the fittest and preventing overpopulation. Cannibalism also serves as a natural mechanism to weed out the weak and the sick, hence preserving the health of the species. It's a survival strategy that, while harsh, ensures the continuation of the strongest genes within the population. However, it's not all about survival of the fittest. Cannibalism in nature also has a darker side. It can be a vehicle for the spread of diseases. This is particularly true when animals consume members of their own species that are infected with parasites or diseases. For instance, when a prion disease broke out among deer populations, it was found that cannibalistic behavior significantly increased the spread of the disease. Yet even with these potential downsides, cannibalism remains an integral part of nature's balance. It's a behavior that has evolved over millions of years, serving a purpose in the grand scheme of life. So the next time you're out in nature, remember that the world around you is a complex web of interconnections. Every behavior, no matter how gruesome it may seem to us, has a role to play. Each creature, each action contributes in its own way to the delicate balance of ecosystems. Cannibalism, while gruesome to us, plays a critical role in maintaining the balance in nature. We've explored the gruesome yet fascinating world of cannibalism in the animal kingdom. It's a journey that has taken us from understanding the reasons behind this behavior, through a myriad of examples, all the way to the broader ecological implications. We've learned that a cannibalism, while seemingly brutal, is a natural survival strategy for many species. It's a way to ensure survival in times of scarcity, to eliminate competition, and even to propagate one's own genes. From the praying mantis to the polar bear, cannibalism is a behavior that spans across a wide range of species, each with their unique reasons and circumstances. We've witnessed instances of cannibalism that are as diverse as the animal kingdom itself. The female redback spider, who consumes her mate during copulation, ensures that her offspring will carry the strongest genes. The sand tiger shark embryos, who consume their siblings in the womb, guarantee their survival even before birth. These instances, while brutal, underline the relentless pursuit of survival and propagation that drives the natural world. We've also delved into the impact of cannibalism on ecosystems. It's a behavior that can regulate population size, maintain genetic diversity, and even contribute to disease control. While it may seem counterintuitive, cannibalism plays a crucial role in maintaining the balance in nature. This exploration has revealed a side of the animal kingdom that many of us are unfamiliar with. It's a side that challenges our understanding of nature, pushing us to see beyond the surface and appreciate the complexity of life on Earth. From survival strategies to ecological balance, cannibalism is a fascinating, if gruesome, part of the natural world. So the next time you see a nature documentary, remember, the animal kingdom is much more complex and intriguing than it might first appear.